So recently I picked up this CPU. It's a Phenom 2 1035T. It's six cores, 2.6 gigahertz. It'll turbo up to 3.1. And I was going to put this up against, and I still plan on putting it up against the first generation i5. The one that I currently have is a 750S. And I bought it because it was around the same clock speed. However, I got to thinking, how well would this do up against an FX, a six core FX? Now this FX was, I believe, two years newer. So this was made two years after this. Uh, it also runs at 3.5 gigahertz. It'll turbo up to 4.1. So there's a bit of a speed difference there, but I was still kind of curious to see how would this do against this? Would this absolutely destroy this or would they be somewhat similar? So I figured why not? I, even though it's not really a fair comparison, let's give it a shot and see how they do. Then we'll overclock this and see how close we can get it to the FX and uh, go from there. Now, again, I know I can overclock the FX, but at that point it's where do you stop? I just wanna see how hard it is to get this to reach this, if this is even faster than this. So let's take a look. Throughout this video, try to keep this in mind. This Phenom was released nearly three years before this FX and it was clocked nearly one gigahertz lower. It also has much less cache than the FX. Looking at just the numbers makes you think that this Phenom wouldn't even have a chance in keeping up with this FX. Another thing going against the Phenom is the instruction sets. As the FX is a newer and more modern CPU, it has loads more instruction sets, which helps performance in certain situations. Now, just so you know, both CPUs were benched using the same motherboard, the same RAM, and the same NVIDIA 1650 GTX GPU. First up, Passmark. The final CPU score is about a thousand points lower for the Phenom, with all of the individual tests showing higher scores for the FX. However, some you may notice aren't that far off, such as single-threaded score, physics, and floating point math. However, the memory test shows the Phenom pulling ahead by over 100 points. In 7-zip, the FX finished first. However, the Phenom wasn't fought too far behind and only finished about 28 seconds later. Now, I ran Cinebench twice. This first run tests single core performance. The FX pulled ahead and won this by a little over four minutes. During the multi-core run, the FX eventually pulled ahead and finished first, but only by a minute and a half. And again, remember this Phenom is three years older and clocked nearly a gigahertz lower, and all the FX could muster in this test was one minute or a 174 point lead. Once again, Handbrake was fairly close with the Phenom rendering about three FPS lower and finishing two and a half minutes after the FX. As I said before, even one FPS can make a huge difference when rendering a large file. However, still pretty close considering. Now in modern times, you wouldn't use either of these if you wanted to profitably you know, mine any coin. However, when put together, the FX definitely has the lead. It's mining at about twice the hash rate of the Phenom. I'd guess that XM Rig is taking advantage of an instruction set on the FX that the Phenom is missing. In heaven, the FX also pulled ahead by about 33 frames per second on average. Superposition was a bit closer with the FX only pulling ahead by an average of 10 FPS. Unreal Tournament was extremely close. This is an older game that doesn't leave the Phenom out in the cold by using, you know, instruction sets only available in the FX. As you can see, they both perform about the same. The final averages were 243 FPS for the Phenom and 248 for the FX. W would, would this be a good time to remind you again that the Phenom was clocked one gigahertz lower? Anyway, moving on. The Crisis Remastered benchmark also shows them performing pretty much the same. It's hard to tell because the benchmark is impossible to sync up with different frame rates. However, they only averaged about 13 FPS apart, with the FX averaging 95 FPS and the Phenom at 82. Need for Speed Most Wanted. This game came out at a time when multi-core CPUs were still a new thing for games. Regardless, both performed nearly identically, with the Phenom averaging about 3 FPS higher. Portal 2, as usual, ran on each just fine. The FX pulled ahead by about 30 FPS, but both, as you can see, were well over 200 FPS on average. BeamNG's 
benchmark didn't really run too well on either. Not sure if this is due to the recent update or just the CPUs being too slow. It runs fine on my main computer and laptop, so probably just older CPUs. Regardless, the Phenom scored 10 FPS, while the FX pulled ahead by about 16. GTA 4, as usual, here's the settings I'm running on both. And well, they performed about the same. The Phenom felt a bit smoother, but the FX had a higher frame rate, by, but only by about 3 FPS. I'll let the benchmark run for those who want to see, however, both performed nearly identically and they were each over 60 FPS, so the benchmark results are pretty much worthless. With GTA 5, just like GTA 4, both performed about the same. And as before, I couldn't feel any major differences between them while playing. Both felt fine, textures and objects loaded fine on each, and I can't really complain. Here's the last scene of the benchmark for those who want to see it. Okay, so here we go. I overclocked the Phenom to 3.6 gigahertz to better match the FX. I could have gone higher as it really didn't fight me. I only had to up the uh, memory and CPU voltage a bit, but at this speed, it was still completely stable. So let's take a look at a few of the benchmarks. Pass mark actually shows the Phenom pulling ahead in the final score. However, not all the individual tests had the same result. I'll let you read it, but really what pushes it over is SSE, compression, and floating point math. And obviously, since we're overclocking the bus, the memory score is going to be higher. This CPU is locked, after all. The Cinebench single-threaded run had the overclocked Phenom nearly running in lockstep with the FX. Both finished with the same time and the same score. The overclocked Phenom was not messing around during the multi-threaded run. It pulled ahead of the other two, finishing two minutes faster than its stock run and a minute 30 faster than the FX. Handbrake was the same story. The overclocked Phenom outperformed the FX again by about 5 FPS and finished nearly 3 minutes sooner. I also ran Y Cruncher on all. The stock Phenom was about 32% slower than the FX. Even with it being overclocked, it still couldn't match the FX's time, but it did come close. Here are the results of all the apps. So if you've forgotten, you might be thinking, okay, who cares, it's slower. But you gotta remember, this Phenom was clocked one gigahertz lower than the FX, and it was released nearly three years prior. When we look at gaming, it's even closer. With games like GTA 4 and 5, the average FPS is near identical. Now in the overclock results, the Phenom actually pulls ahead of the FX in Unreal Tournament 3. It actually also pulls ahead of a third gen i5. This makes me wonder how a faster Phenom would do in this same situation. Would a 1090T or 1100T uh, actually perform the same as this FX? 
might have to do that in the future if there's any interest. But also, what does this say about either of these chips? Were the Phenom 2s just that insanely good, or did the FX suck? I'm not going there. Uh, you can leave your beliefs in the comments. But again, as usual, um, I just want to say thank you for watching, and um, I'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye.